Hi everyone, thanks so much for listening to another episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff and I'll be your host for the show. Before we bring on tonight's guest, if you've had a Dogman Encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. If you've had a Sasquatch sighting and would like to be a guest on Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, please go to bigfooteyewitness.com and submit a report. All right, let's bring on tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is Melanie. Melanie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vic. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Melanie, please give us a brief bio on yourself. Okay. I'm 58 years old. I have three kids. They're all grown. I've worked with horses for 27 years, um, racetracks and barns and you name it, I've done it. I grew up in a town where it was a small town. It was nothing but woods and farms and dirt roads. So I spent all of my time in the woods. I can remember when I was probably, I wasn't even in kindergarten yet. I was probably four years old. My mom would put my little tennis shoes on and out the door I'd go and I would head into the woods. And I spent all day in the woods, just playing in the trees, climbing trees, checking out ponds, swamps, whatever I could find to get into, I did. And I wouldn't come home until my dad whistled when it was dinner time. And then I'd come back home and and we'd have dinner. And the next day I'd start it all over again. I love to fish. I'm a fisherman. I have spots back in the woods that I fish that not many people know about. I fish at night alone. I enjoy it so much. I also hunt for mushrooms. I'm a mushroom hunter. Except for fishing, I'm a vegan, which makes me kind of a hypocrite, but I don't eat the fish. I just fish for them, but I'm a vegan. And I also foster orphaned wild animals, mostly raccoons. And that's about it for me. Well, I hate to tell you this, Melanie, but if you're a vegan, but you still do fish, then yeah, I'm sorry. I can't talk to you. I know I'm a hypocrite. (laughs) I know I'm a freaking hypocrite. I know I am. (laughs) No, not at all. Not at all. Don't worry about that. You're obviously a country girl at heart, Melanie. When you were a kid, did anything ever happen to you that might have been cryptid related? You know, it's strange that you asked me that because seriously, I grew up in the woods. I mean, when I was four years old, I would, my mom would put my tennis shoes on and I would head to the woods. We lived where it was all woods and ponds and dirt roads. And I would head to the woods and I'd spend all day in the woods. And I think maybe I was so intent on talking to myself the whole time I was out there that I never really saw anything. But something happened when I was about five or six years old that I didn't remember until I was writing down things for your show. And it came back to me. And I think it might be kind of pertinent to this. Okay, so where we lived, we had this huge backyard. And the back of our yard, there was a lane, if anybody knows what a lane is. And then there was a the back of a pasture where there were two horses and a donkey and this donkey was very old and the horses really shunned him. They were always mean to him. Well, I'd always go out and feed the horses. I'd feed them carrots, but the donkey never came up to the fence line. And I always felt bad for him. Well, I'm thinking it was in the fall that I could hear my parents were talking about how the horses killed the donkey. And I was in the living room and I was sitting in front of the TV and I was playing with something and my mom and dad were in the kitchen and I could hear them talking and they were talking about how the horses killed this donkey and it made me really sad. And now in my house, my dad was the boss. It was the sixties. It was probably 1969 and my dad ruled the roost. I mean, nobody questioned him. Nobody, if he said something, it was the law. So my mom and dad were talking and they were talking about what happened. And my mom said something about that was so sad that the horses killed that donkey. And I remember my dad saying, what about the claw marks? And 
my mom said to him, which absolutely threw me because my mom never questioned my father. She said, Raymond, we aren't going to talk about that ever. And that was it. That's all they said about it. And nothing else was ever said about it. And I did not remember that until I was writing down notes for the show. And then it came back to me and I don't know what they meant. I don't know what that was all about, but apparently the horses didn't kill the donkey. Something else killed the donkey. And where I lived, it was in Ohio. It was in Northeast Ohio. We had no big cats. We had no wolves. I don't remember there even being coyotes there. I never heard any or saw any when I was little. So I don't know what they were talking about, but it it really kind of blew my mind when I remembered it. Oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah, understandably so. The experiences you're going to tell us about tonight all happened around Atwater, Ohio. What can you tell us about that area? Well, Atwater is a, it's a township. It's not even a city or anything. There's a city above it and a city below it. But Atwater itself is so rural. You'd have to look it up on a map to even realize how many acres of woods there are here. It's just, we have three different reservoirs that go through it. It is nothing but farms and dirt roads, back roads and woods. And I mean, the woods go on and on. There are just acres and acres and acres of woods. So where we lived, where we lived at first is on one of the main roads. It's 183. It's kind of a main road. And it goes into Alliance, Ohio, which is a big city. But Atwater wasn't a big city. So we lived in this little house and we were surrounded by woods. Behind us was nothing but woods and fields and then like little islands of woods and then more woods. And way off to the left was a Christmas tree farm. But that was down the road to the left of us. So there is one light in the whole town. It's a flashing red light. There's a Dollar General, there's a Circle K, there's a pizza shop, and there's a bar. And I think a tire store. That's that's all of Atwater. It was 20 minutes to a store, to like Walmart or something. So it was a very, very rural area. It sounds like it. From what I understand, Atwater has a reputation for being a cryptid hotspot. Please tell us more um, about that. Oh my God, Atwater is thick with them. If you go on Google and Google cryptid sightings in Atwater, Ohio, you're going to not believe what you see. I mean, it's amazing. There have been so, so many. Apparently, there are these abandoned coal mines in Atwater. And I didn't realize that for a long time. And I've just recently become aware of that. And I've been trying to map them. Apparently, they're all over Atwater. They are everywhere, and they're abandoned. And a lot of the sightings in Atwater of Bigfoot and other cryptids have taken place in the areas where these coal mines are. So I'm trying to find them because I really want to go investigate them, although I'm a little bit nervous about it. I don't want to go alone, but I'm, I'm going to find them and, and check them out. Yeah, when you think about all the woods around that area, I can't think of a better place for cryptids to hang out so yeah that's no surprise oh Vic it's amazing and I mean there's a reservoir called Woolborn that goes right through Atwater and then there's another reservoir called Deer Creek and it connects to Woolborn and it goes through Atwater and then that goes into West Branch Reservoir which goes through Portage County and I always felt like the Bigfoot used them to travel because they all connect and it's just so many lakes There are so many lakes in Atwater, lakes and woods and train tracks. And that's, I mean, that's Atwater. It's just woods, lakes, and train tracks. Yeah, like I said, no wonder. That's a perfect habitat for them. That's what I thought. And I never really thought about it. I never thought when we lived there, I really wasn't into cryptids or Bigfoot or anything. My thing was lots of places to go for deer rides. I taught my daughter how to drive through Atwater, you know, just going for deer rides. And that's always what we were looking for was just deer. I don't think I was ever really interested in any kind of cryptids like Bigfoot or 
dog man. I didn't even know what a dog man was, but I just never even thought about it. Well, until you saw one, you really wouldn't have a reason to even think about it. So, yeah, that's no surprise. And speaking of that mine you just mentioned, you actually heard about a dogman encounter that supposedly happened there. What more can you tell us about that? Well, there are a lot of mines, actually. There are probably about eight mines in Atwater, abandoned coal mines. And um, there was a couple of teenagers, and it was a brother and sister. And he was on his dirt bike. They were on his dirt bike. And they were just going to the mines, and that's where they would ride their dirt bikes. Well, they got there, and they saw some things, and they thought it was their friends. They actually thought these people that they saw were their friends there. So they got a little closer, and they realized it wasn't their friends. It was creatures standing on two legs, and they turned and started looking at them, and the the sister jumped off of the bike and turned it off. And the brother got very upset because he wanted to get out of there. They didn't know what these things were. I'm not sure if they were Bigfoot or they were Dogman, but they were not human. They were covered in hair and they were standing on two legs. And they, I believe there were two or three of them. If you look it up on Google, if you Google it, it'll tell you what the whole story was. But it was scary for them. And he got his sister back on the bike and they left. And then there's also a dump, an old dump that's there. It's called the BFI or something dump. And there's a lot, a lot of old tires there. And the tires kind of make caves. The way they're stacked, they make caves inside where things can live. And a lot of guys in the town ride their four-wheelers back in there. And they've experienced a lot of different things. So there's all kinds of places in Atwater where different cryptids could hide. There was a time one summer when my daughter was a teenager and her friends were all teenagers. They were younger. And about five of them came over and they swore to me that they had seen something white up in the tree, not far from where we lived. It was right off of this bridge. And it was hanging in a tree and it was all completely white and it had long arms and long legs and its arms and legs were both wrapped completely around this tree, but like doubled almost. They were so long and they swore they saw it. And I can't remember what those things are called, but I I have no doubt that they saw it. You've got me wondering what else is hanging around that area. Sounds like a lot of strange things do. Well, like one night, where we lived, there's a church beside us. It was a little ways away from us. And there was a huge parking lot. But it was so dark in that water. You could see every star in the sky. I mean, every single star. And a lot of times I'd go over into the church parking lot. And I'd just look up and watch the stars. And one night, these orange orbs. Not, I can't say orbs. They were just like, sh- I'm going to say ships. Because I know that's what they were. They were bright orange and they were round and they were way up in the sky and they were in military fashion. There was one and then a little ways back, there were two a little farther away. And then there were two more a little farther apart, two more a little farther apart. There may have been like 13 of these things. And I watched them for a long time and they they went through the sky and they changed positions but in a military fashion it was crazy and when they got to a certain point at the back of this parking lot which was back by the woods the first one literally took off and in light speed disappeared like I could see the the trail of its light disappearing then the next two came closer together and light speed they just took off and disappeared and I could see the trail of their light. And each one of those groups did the same thing until they were completely gone. And I know what I saw was not military, not like government or, I mean, they were definitely something unworldly. After hearing about all these strange things that you've seen and heard about there, maybe we ought to start calling it the Atwater Triangle or something. It's, you should. <laughs> it's like that. There are so many things 
there are so many weird things. That, if you go into Atwater, you can feel it. It's like a different place. It's like being in another world when you're in that town. It's like you're not even a part of the real world. There's there's just something over that town that is odd. After hearing you talk about all these things, yeah, I believe you. I do. All right, Melanie, please tell us about your encounter now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. All right. It was 2008. I was raising two of my grandchildren, and they were six and nine. My daughter was 14 and a half. And every night we would go for a deer ride. I mean, all of that water is nothing but back roads and woods. So you'd see all kinds of deer and who knew what else. One time my daughter and I were driving. I was teaching her how to drive and we turned a corner and there was a huge cow in the road. I mean, you just never knew what you were going to encounter. So the one night I said, come on, let's go for our deer ride. Well, nobody really wanted to go except my granddaughter. And she was nine. And her name was Destiny. And I said, okay, come on, Destiny, let's go for a deer ride. So we started driving down the roads and where we'd always seen deer. And we really weren't seeing any deer. So we went down and we went down this road called Virginia. And we always would see deer down there because there was where we had lived previously. I told you about the Christmas tree farm to the left. Virginia was the back of the Christmas tree farm on the right. It was the very back of the Christmas tree farm. And I could send you pictures if you'd like. But on the right, there was a house, a very old, old house. Then there was a path to woods. Then there was another house way back in the woods. So we were coming down Virginia. We weren't seeing anything, which really surprised me because we always saw deer in Virginia. So we got about maybe halfway through the back of this Christmas tree farm on the right. And all of a sudden, my granddaughter and I saw this at the same time. And she said, Grammy, what is that? And we both looked at this thing. It was about, oh, my God, it had to be eight feet long, about four feet tall. It was on all fours. It was not a coyote. It was not a wolf. We didn't have wolves around there. I mean, there's a chance it could have been an all-black coyote, but I've never, ever seen a coyote that big. It was enormous. It was it was long, and it was going across the road, and it wasn't walking or running. It was like loping. Its back legs were odd. I just could not stop looking at its back legs. Its back legs were kind of like its feet were turned outward slightly and it acted like it walked like it, it, it wasn't comfortable walking on all fours. I know that sounds crazy, but that's exactly what I thought about when I saw it. It had a huge, it wasn't that thick. It was, it was rather thin. It was all black and it was rather thin, but its chest was like a pit bull's chest only for its size it matched its size it was its chest was huge it was sticking out and it was just this massive chest um not much of a neck big head not a huge head though not like i've heard in some of your stories but but a big head um its ears were long but not unbelievably long they weren't I mean, I wouldn't have looked at it and said, oh, my God, those ears are so big. They were they were proportionate to its head. Not real pointy, but but kind of pointy, fur covered. Um, it had a snout like like a shepherd, but it was all black. It was. I couldn't I couldn't tell you that its front legs were longer than its back. And I think that's because I was more focused on its back legs, how odd they looked. They just looked odd. They just looked like they had like an extra joint or an extra bone in them. They just, they didn't, they didn't, they were dog legs, but they didn't match its body. They were, there was something odd about them. It was, um, it had black eyes as far as I could tell until it turned, it, it never looked at us directly. 
but it was looking it all of a sudden it looked towards the left at us but with its head straight ahead and its eyes were kind of a yellowish brown color its tongue was hanging out off the side of its mouth you know on our side and it made me think that it had been hunting in the tree farm because it looked like it was worn out i mean it was just you could tell it was it was you know it was just worn out and it was the whole time it loped across the road it kept us in the corner of its eye and looked at us and i believe i held my breath the whole time that it walked in front of us and i mean we weren't 15 feet from this thing and i'd never seen anything like it in my life i've seen coyotes i've seen i've never seen a wolf in person but i've seen them in videos it wasn't a coyote it wasn't a wolf it was huge and it was its waist was really thin the black hair wasn't long or shaggy it was it was you know maybe an inch or two long beautiful animal i mean it was beautiful it was it was just shiny maybe because it had been running and hunting i don't know but it walked across the car there my van in front of us and it took a long time because it wasn't running it was loping like it was very like it had been like it, like if you see an animal that's been hurt or hit by a car the way it walks only this hadn't been it's it wasn't hurt it was just the way it walked i mean its back legs were just so odd and it just didn't move them very well and it walked across the road and into the wood that would patch of woods and then disappeared and i think i let my breath out and the moment it disappeared this feeling came over me that i was going to be sick i have never felt this in my life and the feeling of sick dread that came over me was unbelievable i've never felt that my granddaughter was crying at this point and she's seen everything she grew up in the country this kid has seen everything she was absolutely devastated she was cry she was sobbing and i was trying not to get sick and i was in such fear it was it was palpable it was this fear that i had was just unbelievable and i couldn't figure out why like what was that why do i feel like i'm going to throw up i just couldn't i couldn't put my finger on and the whole situation it didn't make any sense it was almost like a cartoon like this thing was almost like a cartoon only real it it didn't look real it looked it looked like something you'd see in a scary cartoon and when it was gone i i i don't know i just i literally felt sick and we didn't go back down the road we backed up back to the main road that was pretty scary we never did know what that was i had no idea of dog man or anything i i did not know it didn't look like a werewolf but i didn't know what it was it was it was unworldly so for the next week we didn't go for any dog rides or any deer rides i'm sorry but a week later i said come on you guys it's you know we do this all the time let's go for a deer ride well molly my daughter she didn't want to go she was on her computer but destiny and bobby my grandson who was 6 they wanted to go so okay so we didn't go down that road anymore but we went down different roads so we went down this one road and it it came up on a lake and then off of this road was a little road that just looped around i'm not even sure why they what the purpose of it was but it was just like a it was called petri and it just looped around from one point in that road to the other there were no houses on it there was no electric it was just like woods and brush and stuff so we're we're driving around this little loop we get to the point of it and this deer comes tearing out in front of the car it was just a small doe came tearing in front of my van and i'm looking because 
there's nowhere for this deer to go. It's it's it goes across the the woods and then to the lake. Like, where are you going? I'm thinking. So I'm looking there and destiny starts screaming, Grammy, go, 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 please go. And I'm I looked at her and I'm thinking, what is going on? And I looked at where she was looking and over to the left in the brush, about 10 feet up in the brush. And I mean, it was thick. It was like trees and brush. And no, there was nothing there, no houses or anything. There are these two red spots and they were big red spots. They were really big and they were pretty far apart. And she's crying. She's just, please, Grammy, let's go. Please, let's go. And in the meantime, my grandson, Bobby, he's in the back and he is literally freaking out, crying and and we got to go. And he's just like freaking out. And I'm looking at these spots and I'm thinking there's no electricity. There's no lights. Like, I don't know what these things are. So it's going through my mind like raccoon. No, too big, too far apart. Possum. No, way up. I mean, they were 10 feet up at least. And the kids are freaking out. And I'm I'm looking at these. And I'm trying to get an idea of a shape around them. All of a sudden, they blinked. They closed. They opened. A few seconds later, they closed and opened again. And I decided that's it. My, my, grand, my grandkids are freaking out. They're scared. This thing just blinked. I have to get out of here. So we just left. We just, like, t- took off. To this day, I, I don't know what it was. I know it had red eyes. They weren't glowing like like there was something in them that glowed. But I could see them clearly. You could see the red very clearly. Although my headlights weren't shining on them, they were shining straight ahead. You could still see the red. It was it was just this deep red color. Um, we just had to get out of there. I was I was worried about my grandkids and and it blinked. I don't know what it was. If I would have stayed longer, I probably could have been able to make out a shape. So to this day, I really don't know what that was, but it was there was something big standing there with red eyes. So this was 2010. My grandkids weren't living with us anymore. They had gone with their mom. It was just my daughter and I. My daughter was 16 and I was working at a race barn, um, harness racing. The guy had harness horses, and I would go about 5 o'clock in the morning, take care of the horses, clean their stalls, harness them up. He'd take them out, exercise them. I'd bring them back in, cool them down, you know, get them all set. About 3 o'clock, I'd go home and take a shower, change clothes, go back to the barn, We'd load the horses up and we would go to the racetrack. Well, by the time this one night we got back from the racetrack, it was about 1230. By the time we got the horses put up and taken care of and got everything put away, it was probably one o'clock in the morning. And I had to be back at work the next morning. So the guy that I was dating lived nearby. So I called my daughter and I said, I'm just going to. And this was winter time. It was probably. Oh, I think it was the end of January. I said, I'm just going to stay at this guy's house tonight because I got to get up and go to work in the morning and I'm so tired. So my daughter was like, okay, mom. So at six o'clock in the morning, my phone rings and it's my daughter. And she said, mom, you got to get home. And I said, what's up, honey? And she said, I can't tell you. I'm not telling you. You just got to see it. I was like, okay. So I'm thinking, oh my God, teenagers, you know, you're thinking all kinds of things. What in the world could have happened? So I'm going home. It was probably a 20-minute drive. I get home. I go in the front door, and she said, Mom, come out back. Now, there was probably a good foot and a half of snow on the ground at this time. And we had this, the whole back of our yard for maybe in, in like an area, maybe 20 feet by 20 feet was a fenced-in area for our dogs. We had three dogs. So she takes me out the back door and walk around our house for these like 80 foot catalpa trees. I don't know if anybody listening has ever seen a catalpa tree, 
but they go straight up and they are huge and they have their branches start about 15 feet off the ground and then they have branches going up and there were they were all around our house and there was one right outside her bedroom window which was on the second floor so she walks me over to this tree at the base of this tree is a footprint a left footprint of something that looked like a dog's footprint only there was no heel it was just the front part of the foot it had three distinct toes a fourth toe that wasn't quite as distinct and claws but you couldn't really see it was narrow in the middle but there really wasn't a back part to it it was mostly the front part of the foot about five feet away from that was the right footprint so this was something on two feet that came from that tree so it went so there was the right footprint same thing just the front part of the footprint very very deep distinct claws three distinct toes fourth toe not so distinct but but the center very narrow about six feet away from that was another left footprint all of a sudden you get to the middle of the yard and they turned and they went to where our dog fence was when they got to the dog fence you could tell where they shuffled back and forth like the footprints went back and forth back and forth like i don't know in amusement or or an, an annoy they were annoyed or i'm not sure what the deal was but they just kind of shuffled back and forth and then they went back through the yard and they were about six feet apart and then they went about seven feet apart as they got to the end of the yard they crossed the road and went into the woods. There were woods across from us. Behind us was nothing but woods. All around us was woods, um, except for that church next door and their big parking lot. Everything else was woods. There was a railroad track that ran through. Behind that was nothing but woods. Um, there was a habitat back there that I had found. And it was about a mile back down the railroad tracks into the woods. And I used to go back there all the time. And I always thought it was a Bigfoot habitat. But now I'm wondering, because this thing was apparently in the tree. It had to have been up in the tree because when it came down, there was one footprint at the base of the tree. And they went from there. And it had to have been in the tree watching my daughter through her window. And she said the dogs were going ballistic. She had never heard them sound like this. They were screeching and crying and and like barking and, and howling. And she was terrified. She had never heard the dogs go off like this. And she would not come downstairs to see what was out there. She looked out her window. She couldn't see anything. Whatever this was went through our yard to the dog fence, back through the yard and into the woods. And I don't know what it was, but it wasn't a Bigfoot. I don't believe these were Bigfoot prints. I believe they were dog man prints because they had the claws. The, the top part of the foot was wide. And then it was narrow and there was, you couldn't see a back part. So it was almost like it was walking on its, like the front parts of its feet. It was, it was just so scary to see. And I actually had pictures of it, but that phone ended up in a lake. So I don't have the pictures anymore. If the dog man you and your granddaughter saw looked to be about eight feet long on all fours, if it stood up, how tall do you think it would have been? Oh my God. 10, 11, 12 at least, because its back legs were long. Its front legs may have been long, but I was so focused. Oh, it had no tail that I could see. I didn't see any teeth and I didn't see a tail. Um, its back legs were long and odd. Its front legs may have been longer than its back legs, like a lot of people say they are. I, I'm not really sure. I was just so focused on those back legs because they were so odd. They just didn't, they, they were, they looked like dog legs, but they were turned out. And they just didn't look right, like there was something wrong with them. But I'm guessing, 
oh god, if it would have stood up, it probably would have been ten feet tall. Yeah, that's a big one. It didn't seem to be comfortable walking on all fours, you said. Do you think it would have been more comfortable walking on its back legs than on all fours? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what I thought, that it would have been more comfortable on two feet than four, because on four, it was just, it was loping, and it wasn't, it was odd the way it walked. It, if it would have stood up on two legs, I think it would have walked a lot better. Yeah, you're probably right. It probably would have. Did it ever turn his head and look at you? Never. It's, it kept its head straight ahead with its tongue hanging out of its mouth, but its eyes were looking at us. Its eyes were like, and the look on its face was so, oh my God, the look on its face was so, like it was amused. It just had this look on its face like, like it was amused that we were watching it. You know, and the whole time I could see its eyes kind of looking to the left towards us. And its and its mouth came back really far. Like it, you know, because it was like it had been running. So it was out, you know, out of breath or whatever. So it looked like it was grinning. But the sides of it, if its mouth came back so far, I mean, they were like, it just, that's why I say it looked like a cartoon. Like it was stretched so far back. And it had this creepy look on its face, like like it was amused, like it was um, a smirk. It was smirking. It was definitely smirking at us. And it just, but, it's, but it went back so far, it's the corners of its mouth. And it was almost, you could almost see the folds at the corners where it, it was so far back, you know? It did. It looked like a cartoon. It didn't even look real. It looked like a like a like a cartoon animal only it was real and then there were some other things there was so when we we lived over by this church down the road was the beginning of these railroad tracks and there was a place you could park and walk back in there and and there was this path that went back in and there were three oil wells i mean this path went back like a mile into the woods along the tracks and there were three oil wells okay so this guy that i knew that grew up in this town he knew everything about this town and he was one of these guys who you could take him into a field and he would find arrowheads like all over the place he just had a knack for it so one time he took me back in here and at the third oil well if you just went straight back there was a mound and it was an Indian burial mound. And the only ones who really knew it was there were like the older people in town. Nobody really knew it was there. It was just kind of a, it was just there, but it wasn't like a well-known thing. He had actually found bones, like finger bones. And he found some epiphanies, some statues that had been carved out of flint. And he found this flint pipe that was really cool. It was a pipe, but it was carved out of flint. And it was just so beautiful. Well, he took these bones and everything and he put them beside this tree at the bottom of this tree and he made a hatchet mark in this tree on this mound, which I thought was a terrible thing to do. Like, you can't just move Indian bones, you know, and I just thought it was terrible. So if you went back a little farther past this Indian burial mound, there was this habitat. It was marked by this gigantic X. I mean, it was like these trees were maybe 30 feet long not broken. I mean, they were put there and they were in an X. If you went past those, you went into this area that was pretty open, like all the trees were all broken and moved. And there was this corral that was made. It was like in a, a third of a moon shape. You know, it wasn't a circle. It wasn't a half circle. It was like a third. And it was made out of these 20 and 30 foot trees. And they were all interlocked at the bases of them. So it literally looked like a corral. And all I could think was this is where they ran the deer into, you know, to keep them from getting away. I mean, that's exactly what it looked like. If you went a little farther, you came to the back of the reservoir where it was just swamp and cattails and weeds and stuff. And I used to go back there all the time. And I would actually, I thought it was a Bigfoot habitat. And I would always leave, 
I'd put fruit and meat and stuff in a net bag and I'd hang it in the tree and it was always gone, you know, when I went back again, but I can't tell you for sure. That's what took it. And then after I saw that dog man, I'm wondering now if that was actually a Bigfoot habitat or was it a dog man habitat or what it was. I mean, it just, it was so, it was so specific and so wide open and so right there. It was definitely something's habitat, but I couldn't tell you now what it was. I think it was a Bigfoot habitat. I really do. Although I've never seen a Bigfoot and I don't know what that was that I saw on that little road that night. Although I'm thinking that might've been a Bigfoot because I've heard that if they get angry, their eyes are red and it obviously was chasing that deer. And here we came out of nowhere. And I think it was maybe angry because we, we interrupted its hunt. So I'm not sure what that was, but this habitat was very, really cool. I mean, I used to go back there all the time. And I went back recently and it was all destroyed. So I don't know what happened to it. And then another time, okay, there's, so there were two other things that happened when we lived at the place when the kids were little and there was a tree farm to the left back in that place. One night our cat got out. So that was okay. I mean, they went outside, but I heard it back or I heard something back in the woods, just caterwauling, like this awful sound, like a cat was being skinned or something. So I got a flashlight. It was probably one in the morning. I got a flashlight and I went back through the woods and I'm going back through the woods. I had no fear. Nothing was bothering me. I'm just looking for the cat thinking, well, maybe something's getting the cat. Maybe, you know, I need to find this cat. So I'm walking back through the woods and all of a sudden it was like I hit a wall. I became so scared. I couldn't take another step. I don't know why I didn't see anything but I did not continue through the woods. I just, it, it washed over me like a, like a wave of fear. So I went back to the house and the cat came back. Everything was okay. Another time when we lived, let's see, this was in September, 2013. So my husband surprised me and he said, we're going on vacation. And I said, cool, where are we going? And he said, You know, we got someone to watch the dogs, throw some clothes in the car. We're going to a tree house at the Red River Gorge in Kentucky. And I don't know if you've ever heard about the Red River Gorge, you know, the Daniel Boone Forest. I had never heard anything, but at this time I was like really into Bigfoot, you know, after the habitat and everything, I'm like totally into into looking for a Bigfoot. So we go and we say, we got this tree house way back in the woods. And behind this treehouse, about maybe 400 yards, was a sheer cliff that went straight up. And it was maybe, oh my God, maybe 500 feet high, just straight up. And, you know, it had crevices in it and everything. But that's how the Red River Gorge is. It's all cliffs and caves. And it's just kind of a really cool place. So, We stayed in this treehouse and I'm being, I'm being really, you know, like, I think I'm, I'm cool. So I'm, I'm taking sticks and beating on trees and making these whoop calls and thinking, oh, I'm going to find me a Bigfoot. So we stayed there for three nights and then we didn't want to go home yet. We were enjoying ourselves. So we stayed, they were renting a treehouse to somebody else. So we stayed at this other cabin that was a little farther down So we were in there and it was about three in the morning and I had been drinking beer and I was feeling ballsy. So I had brought these goggles, these night vision goggles, and I put them on and I'm thinking, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to that cliff. I'm going to see, supposedly there was a way you could, there was like a a ladder somebody who'd made so that you could climb up it and get to the top. So I'm like, I'm going to go find that. So I'm walking through the woods and through the, rocks and everything and I'm heading for this sheer cliff and not thinking anything scary not even there was nothing scared in my whole body so I get about halfway there and not seeing anything or anything all of a sudden 
this fear came over me like like something solid and I panicked my whole body went into panic mode and I wouldn't look I wouldn't look around me I was terrified I knew there was something there I was so scared I I wouldn't even look I pulled the glasses off the goggles off I looked down at the ground and I just waited until I could move and when I was able to move again I turned and I ran back to the cabin that we were staying in. Thank God nothing chased me. I don't know what it was that made me feel that, but there was something there. I know there was. Wow, that's awfully creepy. Guaranteed an experience that you're never going to forget about. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It was scary. I've had a lot of different experiences back, you know, in like in Atwater and different places. I. I really don't have a fear of the woods to this day. I look for woods. I, when I'm driving, I fish at night by myself and all of my fishing spots are back in the woods, like little tucked away spots. I love to fish at night. I love to fish by myself. I hear things. I've never seen anything, but I hear things. One night I was at Magador Reservoir. I don't know if anybody knows where that is, but it's, it's a very big lake and they have a fishing dock that goes way out into the water. And it was about midnight, one in the morning. And I was out on the end of the dock and now around this place, there's nothing, there's no houses. There's absolutely nothing, just lake and woods and stuff. And nobody was there except me in this big parking lot. So I'm out on the end of the dock. And all of a sudden, this big, big doe comes tearing through the woods, crash, 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 leaps into the water and swims like crazy across the lake to the other side. And I'm standing there and I mean, she was right in front of me because it's the fishing dock is like a T and I was to the left of the end of the T and that's where the woods are and that's where she's and I'm watching her swim across the lake. And she's swimming hard, like, and it was like she was trying to get away from something. Maybe she wasn't, but I don't know why she would have torn through the woods and jumped into the lake that late at night. And I'm not hearing anything. I mean, it was so quiet. It was unnervingly quiet. And I started thinking about what might have been chasing her because obviously something was chasing her. I hadn't heard any coyotes. I don't know if there's even coyotes out there, but something was chasing her. Something scared her into that lake. And I just decided it was time to go. Like I wasn't going to wait around to see what it was that was chasing her. But Magador Reservoir has a lot of sightings. Maybe it was a Bigfoot. Maybe it was a dog man. I'm not really sure what it was. I'm thinking more Bigfoot. And I would love to experience a Bigfoot. I would really... You know, like, I hope someday I get to see one. I haven't ever seen one yet, but I don't ever want to see a dog man again, especially standing up. I I really don't want to see that. They are scary. That they are. And like I say, it's all fun and games until the dog man stands up. Yes, exactly. How much trouble did you have bringing your granddaughter back around after you had that first encounter with her? You know, she's such a cool kid. Destiny is like, her mom did meth while she was pregnant with her. So Destiny was like a meth baby. And the first couple of years of her life was really tough because she just wasn't normal. She wasn't like, I couldn't even figure out how to, how to do her. You know, she was just so dysfunctional. But after a while, being in the country, like I could take that baby and drop her off in the woods to come back two weeks later and she'd be fine. Like she was just, she would take care of baby and she would help me with the baby animals. And she was just an amazing little girl. I think I probably gave her nightmares for life with all of these experiences that she had. Um, but we, we always went for deer rides. We never stopped. We stopped for about a week after we saw the dog man. She had told her little brother. And then, of course, I told Molly, my daughter. And 
so no everybody was like no we're not going we're not you know you can go for a deer ride mom we're not going but it wasn't too long we started going again and and just really enjoyed we always enjoyed it like i i grew up in the woods and i'm more comfortable in the woods than i am not you know put me around the lake put me in the woods I actually look for random woods to go into them and just investigate them and walk through them. And uh, I really don't have a lot of fear. Every once in a while, I come upon a place in the woods where I feel scared. And I just kind of move out of that place. But I'm, I I don't stop myself from going. And I'm, I'm not sure. I I haven't talked to Destiny for a while. So I'm not sure how she handles everything. Um, there was a lot of trouble between the families, so I'm not able to talk to her a lot. I hope she's doing good, though. I hope she is, too. And I got to give it to you, Melanie. You definitely don't frighten easily, do you? No. No, not when it comes to that. Not when it comes to the woods. I really don't. When it comes, I mean, don't get a spider around me. <laughs> Because I will freak out, you know, like things like that, wild animals and woods, and I'm not scared. In fact, I am really hoping someday to go back and check out all those mines in Atwater. I'm I'm trying to find a good map of where they all are. There's so many of them. It's hard to find the maps for them because they've all been closed down. And But I really want to check them out, but I don't want to go alone. Well, mines are a good place to find dogmen if that's what you're looking for. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, Vic. I don't want to see a dogman. I am so scared of them. They are the most terrifying things I've ever seen. Like the look on that thing's face was so smirky. And and the way its its mouth went so far back, like clear up the sides, it just wasn't even a normal. I'm so glad I didn't see teeth. I didn't see teeth. I didn't see a tail. I really didn't see how big its feet were or what its front paws looked like. But it was scary. It was so freaking big. I don't want to see one of those, but I really would like to come across a Bigfoot and just experience that. Well, there's a good chance I could arrange that. I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, my God. That would be amazing, Vic. And, you know, I never even knew what that thing was called that I saw, I went years not knowing what it was that I saw. I was just totally perplexed. Like, I'm not even sure how I, how I got turned on to your show. But when I first listened to one of the episodes on your show, I was like so relieved because I had a name for it. It was a dog man. Like I listened to the show and it described what I saw so well and they said it was a dog man and i was like oh thank god i finally have a name for this thing it's a dog man like i never really i've never thought about him i've never i never intentionally went looking for them i just couldn't imagine what that thing was it didn't look like a werewolf i couldn't say it was a werewolf it was it really was like a cartoon looking thing only real and when I first heard your show, I just was so relieved. And I have listened to every episode. I don't get anything done around my house. I mean, I go fishing and I go walking in the woods and I listen to your show. That's all I do. And I'm so grateful to you for having this so that everybody can understand what they've seen. Well, you're welcome. I wouldn't have it any other way. So glad to be able to provide it and help the eyewitnesses. Do you think that same dog man that you and your granddaughter saw that night is the same one that left the prints at your house? You know, it wasn't that far away. It was probably, I'm going to say like a, a half a mile from our house where I saw it. I don't think so. I think whatever left the prints at our house came from back in the woods by the railroad tracks. And this was down on the other side of the main road by the tree farm and I think it had been hunting in the tree farm but I think whatever walked through our yard and whatever was in that tree 
which really freaked me out that something was actually up in a tree. What sits up in a tree that has dog footprints? Oh, that's an easy question to answer. A dogman would. Did you ever find out if any of your neighbors saw dogmen in your area? I don't really talk to the neighbors. We didn't have many neighbors. There was that church that was kind of far from us. Across the road was woods. There was a house a little ways down on the left. There was like a, a creek and woods and then a fire department on the right. And we really didn't have any neighbors. So, And I really didn't talk to anybody but the teenagers that hung out with my kids. But I actually am, am going to message this one boy that was a teenager at the time that actually told me about seeing that white thing in that tree. And I'm going to message him tonight and ask him exactly what he saw. When I went about two weeks ago, I did a video documentary with someone who's doing a documentary on cryptids in Ohio. And while we were doing the lead up to the documentary, these kids came out of the woods like they had been the woods we were going into. And they had been sleeping back there that night. And there were three teenagers Well, they weren't teenagers, but three guys and this little boy. And this one guy yells over, are you Molly's mom? And I said, yeah, who are you? Like, I don't know who you are. He said, I'm Jeff. Well, I've known Jeff since he was a teenager. So I told this guy, I said, let's go talk to them. You know, they've been back in the woods. Let's see what they heard. So I ran up to him and I said, hey, did you guys hear or see anything odd while you were back there sleeping? And they said, like, what? And I said, you know, like, I don't know, howls or screams or Bigfoot or anything. And Jeff looked at this other guy that I I knew all these guys when they were teenagers. And he pointed at him. And this one guy just shook his head. And I said, Jeff, what's going on? What did you see? And he said, well, not last night. He said, a couple of years ago, he said, we were down by the bridge and down this trail that goes back to this place. There's a little bridge. He said the water was down and they walked across it to the bank and there was a stick that was sharpened and there were muscle shells that had been popped open and there was a footprint and it was a, it was a barefoot footprint. And this guy's got like 14 inch feet. He put his shoe up to this footprint and this thing was about five inches longer than his shoe and it was barefoot. And he said there was that one, and then up off the bank, they saw another one. And that was all they saw. And I was like, come on, interview these guys, you know. And and he didn't, but I and I don't know why, but but I waded through the water and checked that bank out (laughs) and I didn't see anything. Huh. Yeah, it does make you wonder. It does, I know. So I want to get a hold of this one guy that said he saw that white thing. What are those called, Vic? The, they're all white and they have long arms, long legs, but they're all white, big eyes, no face. I mean, what are those? A rake? Rake. That's it. Yep. I think that's what they saw because these kids swear they saw this thing in the tree right off the road, like back in the swamp. So I'm going to get a hold of him tonight and see if I can't get some more information. Wow. So you have Sasquatch, dogmen, and rakes around there. Yeah, you collect the whole Absolutely. set. Oh, Atwater is like the perfect place for everything you can think of. And you can feel it. When you go into that town, you can feel it. It's just, it's like going into a different world. If you ever get the notion to come to Atwater, I would love to meet you and just like go check out these mines with you. Somebody, I'm hoping somebody will come with me to check them out because I know there's something. I know there's something in these mines. And I think the fall is probably when it's the most active. Well, like I told you, if you don't want to see a dog, man, I'd recommend against doing that. I know. I want to see a Bigfoot, though, but I'd still like to see some kind of evidence of something. And then I saw that footprint like the other day I was in the woods. And I go way back in these woods. I mean, I go back and there are places where there are like rock walls and little caves in them. And that's where I, where I released my baby raccoons back in there. 
So, uh, you know, I always go back in there and I'm crawling through brush and going up these slopes and everything. And so I came out of the woods and right at the edge of the woods was this footprint. And now I'm telling you, we don't have wolves. We don't have big cats, nothing heavy. Like I can't even imagine what could have made this footprint, but it was deep. It was the deepest footprint I've ever seen and it looked like I mean it was a it was a predator for sure and I don't know what it was there was only one footprint but I think I sent you a picture of it so if you could like maybe put it up maybe somebody could recognize what it is but there aren't any wolves or big cats around there so I don't know what it was but it was deep and the ground is not it wasn't muddy it was, it's like mud clay. So you'd have to be really heavy to make this kind of a footprint this deep in this clay. Yeah, I'm going to post that now. Well, it's time for us to get out of here, Melanie. But before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? No, I just think anybody who wants to see a dog man, maybe don't. They're scary. They're very scary. And they have a look on their face that just says, you know, we know what you're about and don't mess with us. But I just don't believe that Bigfoot is so much a predator. I think maybe if we just learn to live, like, let them be, I think everybody will be all right. Good words. Really good words. But having said that, thanks again so much. Have a great night. If you've had a dogman encounter of your own and would like to speak with me, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you.